The purpose of this presentation is to give you an overview of what ESOS is, what it entails, who is affected, and how to comply. Please bear in mind that it will not be possible to cover all the detail around ESOS in these slides, but further detail is available on the government website, details of which I will cover later, as well as our own BSI website. So first of all, I would like to share with you the agenda. I will start by talking through what ESOS is and who it applies to, as there are some parameters around who is affected by it and who isn't. Then we will move on to what businesses are required to do with the intention of highlighting what the benefits are of undertaking the ESOS requirements. We will then look at the time scales for when the activity needs to be completed in, in the first instance, although please bear in mind that this scheme is ongoing. We will then cover what you need to do and what support there is in place from a government perspective. We will then quickly look at the penalties for non-compliance before moving on to the main route for compliance which we want to share with you. So to clarify what ESOS is, it is an energy savings opportunity scheme, otherwise known as ESOS, which is being established by the Department of Energy and Climate Change, DEC, in response to the requirement for all member states of the European Union to implement Article 8 of the Energy Efficiency Directive. All European countries will be required to participate in this scheme. But for clarification, the following slides and information are only relevant to the UK. ESOS is a mandatory energy assessment and energy saving identification scheme for all businesses which are in scope of this requirement. There are two key areas which confirm whether businesses must participate in this scheme. If the business has more than 250 employees in the UK, then they meet the criteria. But, even if they do not, then should they exceed an annual turnover of more than £42 million and a balance sheet of more than £36.5 million, then they will meet the criteria and therefore be required to participate in the scheme. Please be aware of the following though. If a corporate group contains at least one large UK organisation, then all UK organisations of that group must comply with ESOS, regardless of their size. I would like to reiterate, however, that ESOS only applies to those organisations that operate in the UK. In general, SMEs and public sector bodies are exempt from having to meet the ESOS requirements. The scheme requires participants to undertake three main things. Participants must measure their total energy consumption. Under ESOS, energy consumption includes the consumption of all forms of energy products, combustible fuels, heat, excluding the participants' own waste heat, renewable energy, electricity, or any other form of energy. Some participants will already be gathering relevant data under existing policies, such as the CRC Energy Efficiency Scheme and Climate Change Agreements. For most participants, determining what energy is in scope of ESOS will be simple. It will usually be the same as the energy that they pay for. However, there are some situations in which the energy that participants pay for is not the same as the energy that is in scope of ESOS. The following are a set of rules that set out what energy participants must consider as part of their energy consumption. In general terms, energy that is supplied to and consumed by a participant is in scope of ESOS. You must determine your total energy consumption over a consecutive 12-month period, which is known as the reference period. The reference period must overlap with the qualification date. The end date of the reference period must also occur prior to the compliance date. This is to ensure that your calculation of total energy consumption is based on your energy consuming assets and activities at the qualification date. You are free to choose any reference period you wish for your organization, provided it meets these requirements. So as covered on the previous slide, there are three things to do as part of your ESOS requirements, as well as the need to notify the scheme administrator that you have completed and met your requirement. However, it is not mandatory to actually take any action regarding the findings you have after the assessment. However, it obviously makes good business sense to implement anything which comes out of the assessment in order to improve your business. So when does this scheme require things to be done by? Well, 
ESOS will operate in four yearly compliance phases. Organisations in the UK must assess whether or not they are required to participate in ESOS on the qualification date of each phase. The qualification date for the first phase is the 31st of December 2014. For the first phase, this means that activity to support your ESOS assessment, such as Green Deal assessments or other qualifying energy audits, must have been undertaken between the 6th of December 2011 and the 5th of December 2015 to be considered compliant. If you remain in scope of the scheme, you must then undertake ESOS assessments within each subsequent phase. Compliance date is the 5th of December 2015 and then at four yearly periods minimum. Businesses must notify the ESOS scheme administrator by the compliance date that the business has completed the compliant assessment, that is to say, in the first phase. Then this will be the 5th of December 2015. The government has developed two major documents which give a lot of the minor detail which is required to undertake an ESOS assessment. This is well worth reading and can be found on the link on screen. As indicated earlier, it is not possible to cover all the detail behind ESOS, but the link shown is well worth looking at for further information. And, of course, you can contact us here at BSI to discuss your individual requirements. However, there are penalties for non-compliance. The scheme compliance bodies will have the authority to apply civil penalties against an organisation or group found to be required to participate in ESOS but found to be non-compliant with its requirements. So there are approximately 9,000 businesses which the government has specified that fall into being required to undertake the ESOS assessment. Whilst the majority of businesses know they should be doing the various things required regarding usage, etc., there are some that do not treat it as high priority. As explained previously, there are penalties in place should you not be doing this. This, we believe, is a missed opportunity given the cost of energy, for instance. The benefits, therefore, of undertaking this assessment are fourfold, in so much as business could see a 0.7% reduction in energy usage, which will positively benefit the business and which, in turn, will have a significant impact on cost saving per business. It will also help towards lower carbon emissions and could well have a knock-on effect on a business's bottom line and potentially improve their competitive position. So there is a really positive message here for a business to ensure they do this assessment and reap the benefits from it. There are various ways in which businesses can meet their ESOS requirements, but the route which we believe is most beneficial is certification to ISO 50001, the energy management system. Each one of these will have advantages and disadvantages and it will be very much dependent on each individual business. It will be their decision as to the route they decide to take. We believe that certifying to ISO 50001 not only enables a business to meet their ESOS requirements, but also enables them to go further and reap even more benefits. By taking this route, it gives a business a lot more and ensures continual improvement, as opposed to the ESOS, which is only required every four years. The following slides explain what ISO 50001 is what it covers, the benefits to customers, and how it will meet the ESOS requirements, which is only required every four years. Global threats of energy shortages, rising fuel costs, and increasing legislation remain critical factors that businesses need to consider in their daily operations. Individual organizations cannot control energy prices, government policies, or the global economy, but they can improve the way they manage in an energy in the here and now. ISO 50001 helps businesses address these issues, helping them cut their energy consumption and related costs, and enhancing their reputations as sustainable businesses with a commitment to best practice energy usage. Energy is a critical factor for most organizations and one that has major cost implications. ISO 50001 is an internationally recognized standard which builds on the success of the European standard BSEN 16001, developed by the European Commission and introduced as the UK's National Energy Management System standard in 2009. By implementing ISO 50001, 
your business can start to reduce cost, save energy, and meet legislative requirements through a structured and monitored management framework. Effective energy management, however, isn't just good for businesses. It's also becoming a requirement. For example, ISO 50001 is of particular use if your organization is subject to the government's CRC Energy Efficiency Scheme, formerly known as the Carbon Reduction Commitment, or CRC. The CRC now allows verification of carbon emission reduction via schemes alternative but equivalent to the Carbon Trust Standard to count as an early action metric. ISO 50001 specifies requirements applicable to energy usage and consumption, including measurements, documentation, and reporting, design and procurement practices for equipment, systems, processes, and personnel that contribute to energy performance. This standard is applicable to any organization wishing to ensure that it conforms to its stated energy policy and wishing to demonstrate this to others, either by means of self-evaluation and self-declaration of conformity or by certification of the energy management system by an external organization such as BSI. ISO 50001 does not fix targets for improving energy performance. This is up to the user organization or to regulatory authorities. This means that any organization, regardless of its current mastery of energy management, can implement ISO 50001 to establish a baseline and then improve on this as appropriate to the organization. Our clients continually tell us what being certified to ISO 50001 means to them, from areas such as finance and improving procurement procedures through operations and facilities, which helps businesses manage their energy usage both daily and long term, to sales and marketing, and being able to tell their competitors and their customers about their strong environmental credentials. Consider the benefits of certification, such as the improvement in your reputation in the eyes of your customers and investors, being associated with BSI, who is a globally recognized business, the benefits of a regular external audit, and the focus it gives the business and employees. The feedback from independent auditors who can assist in identifying opportunities for improvement. The opportunity to improve your tender process and access to opportunities. And the opportunity to benchmark your approach by using our unique accelerator report. Certification under ISO 50001 is permitted as a compliance route under ESOS as an alternative to undertaking ESOS audits. To be valid as a route to compliance under ESOS, your ISO 50001 Energy Management System must be certified by United Kingdom Accreditation Service, an accredited certification body, by a body accredited by another EU member state, national accreditation body, or by a body which is a member of the International Accreditation Forum. If you maintain a compliant but not certified system, you may wish to consider seeking certification to permit the use of your energy management system as a route to compliance under ESOS. When an, uh, where an ISO 50001 certified system covers all of your organization or group at the time the certification was undertaken, this shall constitute compliance with ESOS provided the certifi certification is still valid at the compliance date which is the 5th of December 2015 for the first ESOS phase. In this circumstance, there is no requirement for an organization or group holding such a certification to have its ESOS compliance verified by a lead assessor. It is clear that certification to ISO 50001, whilst enabling businesses to meet their ESOS requirements, also gives further benefits to a business over and above what is required, such as BSI being able to provide discounted training based on certification being completed through BSI. BSI undertaking a gap analysis or pre-certification to assess where gaps are before starting certification. Or there is also a consultancy program to assist in implementing before certification. ISO 50001 specifies requirements applicable to energy usage and consumption, including measurements, documentation and reporting, design and procurement processes for equipment, systems, processes and personnel that contribute to energy performance. This standard is applicable to any organization wishing to ensure 
that it can conforms to its stated energy policy and wishing to demonstrate this to others, either by means of self-evaluation and self-declaration of conformity or by certification of the energy management system by an external organization such as BSI. In conclusion, it would really benefit a business to certify to ISO 50001 given what we have just gone through. But in order to discuss any of your individual requirements, please visit our website on the link displayed or alternatively call us where we will be happy to talk to you about the ESOS requirements or certifying to ISO 50001.